My guest today is Christina Swanson. Christina, how are you? I'm very good. How are you? I'm doing great. I know the answer to this question, but tell me, what do you do for a living? I have a very cool title. It's called Partner Technology Strategist. That is cool. And I focus on wholesaling. Um, It doesn't mean much outside of Microsoft and our partners, but I get to work with our partners to help them build solutions that is based on the basic tech, the foundational technology uh, across Azure, business applications, and our modern work suites of products. So I know a little bit about most of our products, and then I have a great pool of partner solution architects that go deep into every one of those different technology areas to help build solutions. Like me. Like you. <laughs> and uh, you mentioned partners. These are Microsoft partners, and I want to talk to you about that. Uh, can you define, what, what do I, when I say Microsoft partner, what are we talking about? There's a bunch of different ways to partner with Microsoft, but the foundational way, the start, is to become part of the Microsoft AI Cloud Partner Program. And that gives you the ability to build, go to market, sell, and really understand the Microsoft technology that our customers are using. There's a lot of different paths to get to uh, becoming a partner. Um, Specifically, we can think of Uh, You might just want to build commercial software applications. Uh, We call these independent software vendors or ISVs. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is like a third party that would run on Microsoft. Uh, We also have outsourced IT services. Think about managed service providers is a good example. You can distribute or resell Microsoft products. We call these our distributors or DISD channels. And then you can also uh, create custom solutions Uh, do consulting, integrate um, some of the ISV software that is published into your solution. And we call these system integrators or SIs or consulting. And then there's a couple of other unique ones. Uh, One is manufacture. So you could become an OEM of Microsoft as well. Like hardware. Like hardware. And then we have a unique opportunity to build consumer applications for Xbox games and Windows apps as well. It's another area. Okay, that's a lot of a lot of different types, and we actually uh, Microsoft actually has a a program for helping partners, right? Yes, that's the Microsoft Cloud. I'm sorry, Microsoft AI Cloud Partner Program. We call it MCPP. Oh, tell me about it. So this is where a partner can sign up, and they can decide what what level of partnership do I want with Microsoft. Uh, An individual could sign up. Uh, Maybe they do a lot of consulting with Microsoft and have a company. And they could um, then gain access to some of the tools and software that Microsoft has for them to have a demo environment or learn how to develop in other areas. Mm -hmm. If it's a company that maybe has a little bit larger organization, they could uh, attain what we call a solution designation. What is a solution designation? I bet is a question you would ask. <laughs> oh, wait. Can you tell us what is a solution designation? <laughs> exactly. So this is where we have uh, certifications. Um, it allows us to know the partners have credentials and people that can deliver and implement, design, sell the solutions for Microsoft. And so it's really uh, a program that allows us to differentiate partners maybe have a little more expertise or more staff that can deliver in those specific areas. So we do solution designation is the title of that particular program that we do. Okay. And you mentioned that there's some software available from Microsoft if you're a partner. Are there other benefits to becoming a Microsoft partner? There is. Uh, One of the biggest benefits to becoming a Microsoft partner is the ability to co-sell with Microsoft. And that means that you have... Uh, signed up as part of the partner program, you have also attained a solution designation, and you have published a solution. And when you publish a solution, you have the ability to then submit leads to Microsoft, and those get routed to the account teams that are taking care of our, our mutual customers. And then on the flip side, Microsoft can also send leads back to the partners 
for those specific customers as well. Uh, you, you said publish a solution. What exactly does that mean when you publish a solution? Yeah, so that's a process for sure. We as the uh, tech team that I'm part of and you're part of, we help partners build solutions. So we might go through a process that starts with maybe an architecture design session. What does the partner want to build? Why are they building it? Is there, um, do they have pipeline that makes mm -hmm. sense to maybe expand into a, a different technology or even a different market? And then from the architecture design session, we come up with a build with plan and we can help the partner build the solution, implement the technology into the solution, and then ultimately make sure that that solution is the best version that it can be running in the Microsoft products and technology suites. All of that resources is available to our partners um, and it, it allows us to then get to publishing a solution. That's all done through Partner Center, which is what you gain access to when you sign up to be a partner. And when you publish, you get to choose, am I publishing an ISV? Am I publishing a software? Or am I publishing something that could be downloaded, maybe an Azure inside of somebody's Azure subscription? Or am I publishing a consulting offer? Or am I publishing a Microsoft Teams offer or a business apps offer? And depending on the type of solution it is, it will land in one of two of our commercial marketplaces. So one commercial marketplace is called Azure Marketplace. The other is called AppSource. Azure What's Marketplace, <laughs> the difference is Azure Marketplace allows us to run and deploy the software that runs in Azure. And AppSource allows us to have consulting offers and the uh, my modern work and business applications applications available. <laughs> it's hard to say all together. Oh, nice. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm familiar with the, um, the Azure marketplace and that if I go to the Azure portal and I click, click that big plus button to create a yep. new service, some of those services are created by Microsoft internally. If I wanted a you know, SQL server instance, for example, or a, uh, an Azure function, but some of them are created by our partners. They're, they really are, they're hosted on Azure, but they're hundred percent created and owned by some third party. Yep, exactly. Um, our, now you mentioned a lot of benefits like architecture design sessions and co-selling. Does every partner get access to those benefits or are there levels of you know, things that you have to do to qualify? That. There are different levels of partnerships. Um, once you sign up for the Microsoft AI Cloud Partner Program, when you log into Partner Center, you will have access to those benefits. Mm -hmm. And it will say, um, sign up here to access benefits. So m all partners can sign up for what we call an action pack. That's the access to some of those licenses I mentioned earlier that also opens up the opportunity for partners to have something called technical pre-sales and deployment services. And so based on your solution designation and or action pack level, then you have access to advisory hours through that program. Once a partner uh, has a solution designation and they're sharing leads and they're doing more co-selling with Microsoft, they may reach what we call a manage partner level. And manage partners have access to different tech teams in different geos, depending on where they're located at. And those architecture design, build with, and then ultimately all the go-to-market help is available uh, for those manage partners as well. So as you, as you grow your partnership with Microsoft, you will see more and different benefits become available to you. I see. So it's just regular partner. I just sign up on day one. I get the software and that's, that's awesome. And then if I meet certain qualifications, I move to, I think, action pack level and then even more qualifications, I move to managed partner level. Is it hierarchical like that? Um, the first one is access to partner center and then okay. you purchase action pack. Oh, I see. And or you qualify for solution designation. So some of our Got partners it. that sign up automatically get the solution designation and they don't have to purchase the action, pla action pack, um, and there are different fees associated with different solution designations, and inside a partner center, it literally is a, a dialogue box that kind of guides you through that, um, and then 
either one of those could become a managed partner. And we have managed partners that are managed in each geo, and we have partners that are managed globally as well. Yeah. What, what are some of the things that they need to do to qualify to become a managed partner besides mm. paying the fees, of course? Yeah. One of them, and this is a big one, is to demonstrate that they have people on staff that can deliver Microsoft technology. And this is one of those areas that I think is often misunderstood. So me as a person, Christina Swanson, I go take an exam and I pass our artificial intelligence exam. That exam and certification is my individual certification. Mm -hmm. So if I change roles or change jobs or change companies, that certification goes with me. Right. So what happens is as an individual, I associate my training or learn account with my partner, the partner number that you're assigned when you sign in and uh, become part of the Microsoft AI cloud partner program. As you gain more people and they take more certifications and more exams, then that will qualify you for different solution designations. But the key is, is to also retain them because if they leave, when you go to renew your partner program next year, you're gonna to have to show that you still have the people on staff to retain those designations. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a key. So we, we really want partners, if you're going to train people, pay for their exams, make sure you're retaining them. I've seen partners do a lot of different things. Uh, some partners offer a bonus, uh, some par partners throw a party, uh, some partners have required um, signature of a non-compete for a certain amount of time. There's a lot of ways that you could do that, uh, but definitely retaining those employees is probably cheaper than hiring new ones. Almost always, that's true. Yeah, mm. yeah. And one other level after that, um, partners can also earn something called advanced specializations. And once you have advanced specializations and are sharing leads with Microsoft, you get a different visibility. And advanced specializations does require an audit. Uh, there is a third party auditing company that will uh, review your partner qualifications. It's been a long time since I've looked at all the audit stuff, so I can't remember everything in there. Um, but it is done by a third party and that uh, specialization is available to partners. Any partner can qualify for them. Yeah, I was actually looking at one yesterday. It was a checklist. And one of the things on there is number of certified developers or engineers on yep. staff. Makes uh, sense. But, but I haven't looked at all of them. There's a lot of them. There is a lot. Uh, uh, now, where do uh, you said that an individual, I don't really need anything. Like I could today go somewhere and sign up and make myself a partner and start mm -hmm. with some of these benefits. Where do I start? Partner.microsoft.com. Okay. Yep, super easy. And when you go to partner.microsoft.com, I think the first button at the top, let me pull it up, partner.microsoft.com. First partner um, says become a, first button, excuse me, at the top says become a partner. And it will literally walk you through what kind of partner. And then this is some of the dialogue uh, box that I w had mentioned at the beginning. It'll walk you through what kind of partner. It will ask you all kinds of information about mm -hmm your organization, you'll set up a profile. Um, if you're going to sell software or consulting services through our marketplace and have them transactable, it'll walk you through making sure that we have all the correct tax information to share uh, payment uh, and revenue with you. So it's a, it's a very comprehensive system. I feel like they've done a really good job of the onboarding to Partner Center now, making it easy for our partners to do that self-service. And then if they want to learn more beyond the, you know, dive deeper into some of the things you've talked about, where's a good resource? Learn.microsoft.com is one of our best training resources. Um, that allows you to not only prep your people for the certifications and exams, but there is a whole section of how to work in Partner Center, how to co-sell with Microsoft. Mm -hmm how to set up your business profile. All of that documentation is in learn.microsoft.com. Excellent. Christina, is there anything we haven't covered that you feel we people should know? I think that one of the things that's really under misunderstood as well 
is just the ability to use our architects and that technical pre-sales and any uh, deployment services I mentioned earlier. Our partners are amazing and can develop things that and develop things quickly that we could never. Um, it gives them such an advantage in the market. But don't forsake using some of the Microsoft resources that are available to you. Uh, sometimes you can have a roadmap discussion with the managed partner side, with our tech team organization, and or in the pre-sales and deployment services. And that roadmap conversation might give you insight into things that are coming in three months. So mm -hmm. I'm going to make this up, but let's say that you're developing something in the latest version of SQL. And the roadmap discloses something that is going to maybe change in two months. Instead of developing your solution and publishing it, maybe the week before that new feature goes live, you could work with those teams to make sure that new feature is incorporated into your solution, and then your solution is published with that maybe right after it. That's a very unique um, scenario that I think Microsoft does a little differently than some of the other organizations out there. But take advantage of that because mm -hmm. our services change so very quickly. And oh, yeah. it's very cool to figure out, you know, how can we make sure our partners have that latest technology available in their solutions and organizations? Totally agree. They changed so much faster today than they did 10 oh. years ago when I joined. Absolutely. But uh, eight years for me. So yeah, same. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. So <laughs> well, much fun. Christina, thank you so much. This has been really educational. Well, thank you. <laughs>